Hey guys, I'm the one you lost. Now, rendering. How do we get to this level of rendering that is currently on screen? Well, it took me a really long time to get here, but I'm going to walk you through how I personally do rendering and how you'll learn that less is actually more when you render and how being simple in your coloring actually adds more to the overall feel. So let's begin. So first things first, we have everything in layers. If you watch my videos, you'll know how I personally do layering and how it all works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out the light source. Now, where I wanted the light source in this particular artwork was up and to the right, shining down on the character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a multiply layer on top of the skin to start my rendering and start blocking out the shapes. So when I pick colors from my multiply layer, I actually want to have them muted, very desaturated. And the reason why we are using desaturated colors is because when we go into the final render, we are going to be using post-processing to bring the color back into the artwork. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a very pale, desaturated orange or yellow, and we're going to slowly go over the character and make it one solid color, and then we're going to do something called light carving, where we carve out the light. So we are going to hit C on our keyboard once we have the pen open, and that'll turn our pen into an eraser. And we are just going to simply draw in our light source by what's known as carving it out. That's what light carving is. We have a little bit of light shining on the breast here. Um, if you'll notice, whenever I did this, my tolerance on my fill tool was too high. So now we have one basic light source here, and we're going to use the blur tool to soften the edges of where the light isn't directly hitting. We're going to kind of blend it to make it look nice. We're also going to add a hard edge here where the light doesn't touch. The entire time you're doing this, you're thinking about your light source at all times. I have a little bit on the shoulder appearing as well. And we are just slowly adding where the light would touch. So my recommendation would be, if you don't know where the light touches, to look at videos on form, shape, and uh, level correction. That'll help you figure out where the light touches on your particular artwork. So what I'm going to do now that we have the basic idea, remember, our goal is simple. Simple in shape and design. So I'm going to speed up the video, and we're just going to kind of watch the process happen as I'm working on it. Also, if you'd like to see more videos like this, where I do a little tutorial on my rendering, please let me know. Also, like this video, comment in below. I love to talk to people in my comments. If you enjoy this video, please keep it up. I really, really appreciate it. All right, thank you. Now, this is a game changer. If you're just now noticing, I'm using the magic wand tool or the selection pen to highlight the areas that I only want to affect. This is massive for getting good gradients with the airbrush. Airbrush isn't something you always use. In fact, I prefer to use the G pen for just about everything. But it's good for getting kind of a nice gradient on the character. But seriously, use the selection pen, use the magic wand tool to only highlight the areas you want to affect with coloring it'll take your artwork to really the next level. It really is that simple.
So now we're going to start working on the overalls. And clothing rendering is much harder for me to do because clothes have a very um, soft gradient applied to them at all times. Um, and you want to kind of use more soft brushes rather than hard brushes. So you'll see I kind of use the uh, selection pen and use a clipping mask to add a small gradient to where the light isn't touching. And then we're going to adjust it later. We're adding some hard shadows where it kind of connects. So again, we're keeping the light source in mind, and now we're going to start adding creases to uh, the clothes themselves. We are still using the selection pen. I'm telling you, selection pen is really how you get things done. I recommend it every time, all the time. So we're just kind of highlighting everything, making it look nice. And what we're going to be doing here pretty soon is we're going to be adding a texture. Now, I don't always add textures, but for things like jean texture, I think it's super important to add a texture to the clothing. And you can download them on Clip Studio's asset store looking for denim or like canvasy type textures. And then we're going to apply over it. So we kind of got the idea going now, adding the variation to everything. And it's looking good. It's looking like a good pair of overalls. <laughs> so now is where we're going to start adding the texture after uh, the softer parts of the clothing. Now, I'm not really the best at applying texture, but I'm definitely getting better at it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to search all my assets. And I actually made a mistake. I didn't realize I was in the material folder and not the downloads folder. So that's why things were kind of weird. But here we go. We're looking for the denim cloth. And we are just going to add it on top on a clipping mask on top of the folder layer. And we're going to adjust the opacity and the size to where it looks right for the artwork. We're going to set it to hard light. And we're going to reduce the opacity to where it just adds a slight texture overlay on top. Now here is where I hand draw some rips in the overalls because it definitely needed a little extra something to it. So I kind of get the same color that I did for the skin and I'm just going to draw some rips and tears in the, uh, de in the denim. Now I'm not the best at this yet. I'm, I'm slowly getting better, but it's one of those things that I, I like to be honest when I'm not quite 100% good at something yet, just because it kind of, uh, Honesty is the best policy in terms of what I know and I don't know. So there we have it, the little bit of tear in the, uh, in the denim. Now, this part isn't fully necessary, but I do like to do it where I add an add glow layer on top of the clothing and I add kind of like a, a slight reflective lighting of the skin back on the clothes themselves. This isn't fully um, something that you should always do, but I kind of wanted to add kind of a, a transition point between the skin and the clothing, if that makes any sense. And now we move on to the hair. We are just going to make simple cell shading for the hair. Um, I technically, I really don't like to overcomplicate my hair because every time I've tried to do that, it doesn't really work out very well. So keeping the hair simple, just like the skin, is super important. We are going to be using the magic wand tool to add kind of a shine of light through the hair and kind of add a gradient to like separate it. We are going to add kind of a purplish hue into the back of the hair, like. The sun is shining through the hair ever so slightly. And it also creates a good separation between the skin and the hair itself. And that is basically how I do hair. It's not super complicated. It's just a matter of getting the shapes correct. And like I said, if you want more information on that, 
there are great videos out there on form and shapes in artwork. And now is where I play a trick with composition. You'll notice that the tail kind of moves back to the hair and the face. Well, we're going to kind of really push that even further with kind of these yellow streaks that are going to move the composition back toward where I want people to look. Composition is complicated, but it's also um, something that so now you comes the fun part, the post process. Study it. What we're going to do is we're going to put everything we have in one folder, and we are going to. Copy that folder, duplicate the layer, and we are going to create a hard light copy on top of it. And what this is going to do is it's going to make the whole thing glow like crazy. We're going to blur the layer, and it's going to make it just kind of really more intense, very beautiful, if, you, if that makes any sense. We're going to kind of adjust the blur to where it looks just right, and what we're going to do now after it's done is we are going to lower the opacity where it just adds kind of a soft little glow to it. And that is probably where I would like it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use an add glow layer. and We're going to add kind of a, a very saturated orange where the light is touching. So the areas we left open for uh, lighting, we want to add kind of an orangish hue to it. And this isn't to everyone's taste, but it's to mine personally. Um, I really like orange in my skin tone. And we're going to make it a little more red using a tonal curve later. You'll notice that I use a, a slight blue hue to kind of bring out the jeans a bit more. We're also going to make the eyes glow a bit. And now is where we add the tonal curve. Now, I'm going to explain the tonal curve real quick. So essentially, a tonal curve is taking colors and separating through brightness and darkness. So we're going to go to tonal curve. And everything on the right side is the bright parts. And everything on the left side is the dark parts. So when we're adding red to the brights and we're adding blue to the darker areas, that is what I'm technically doing here. It's uh, it's actually not crazy complicated. It just looks scary. We're going to add a tonal correction to kind of brighten up, sorry, uh, brighten up and more darken the hues than kind of make the black point not as intense. So there's not as much contrast. And now we're going to do some color balance to kind of make sure the colors are a bit more where I want them. We're going to go to color balance. We're going to go to highlight. I want a little more red in the highlights. Maybe slightly a bit more yellow. I probably should have done blue looking back at it, but that's the way it is sometimes. It's kind of just a matter of adjusting to what looks correct to you. Add more blue to the darker areas. Now, I will say, looking at it right now, we need to do slight adjustments to the opacity of each effect layer because it's looking a little overbaked right now. So we're going to kind of adjust it and make it look correct. I still want everything to be saturated, but right now it might be a little too saturated, if you know what I mean. And now all it is is a matter of adding some eye candy, some dust, and everything looking nice. Now, not everything I ended up finishing at the end was fully recorded, so that's on me. But I do hope it helps. So we are pretty much nearing the end right now. So if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye. Thank you, at Cooper White Shield, Rubeb, Prismic, Prismatic, sorry, 420 Zedan, Emilin, Beer, Night Angel, Andy Scaldito, Shane, Roxa, Zaret, Dalton Lily, Fainer T. Gager, 
Tomps, double O, Zip, Matthew C, and Dallas Long. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon, guys. Bye.